The Liebherr LR1750 crawler crane is certainly a crane in the heavy class. It can lift up to 750 tons and has a maximum lifting height of 191 meters. That's over 600 feet. This model of the LR1750 is in the colors of Wagenborg Nedlift, the Netherlands heavy lifting and transport specialist. The model comes in a Liebherr branded box and it's very heavy, so you almost need a crane to lift it. The printed sleeve encloses the expanded polystyrene trays and the first thing you find is the printed manual. It's all in black and white and there's quite a lot of pages to it. It's got a fully annotated list of parts, which doesn't actually pick up every part, but it's pretty good. The assembly instructions are all done pictorially, there's no writing. And most people should be able to follow them, only the reaving of the hooks is missing. This version of the model has a suspended counterweight frame, and so there are a couple of extra sheets to describe that. Moving on to opening the box, it is factory sealed, so there are a couple of ties to split, and then you can take the lid off the top tray. And that's got the main crawler track frames and various lattice sections. The second layer has got the body of the crane, a lot more sections and also the hooks and other smaller parts. And the bottom part is the heaviest because it's got all of the counterweight pieces. In this part one of the review the model will be assembled in its most basic configuration. And that starts by fitting the jacks onto the outriggers. These are used by the real crane to unload itself from transport and on the model you just screw the jacks into the outriggers. So it supports itself and if you want to show it on transport you just screw up the jacks and fold in the outriggers. The parts of the model are joined together by using plastic bolts of one size or another and the crawler track frames use these very large ones. And they just slot in and make a really good strong connection between the crawler track frames and the crane undercarriage. Next to fit is the central ballast and the first thing to fit is four of these small brackets which just fit into place. And onto those fit large metal brackets. You move the outriggers off to the side and then you can slot the plate in as long as you get it the right way round and that just drops into place. On top of that goes three ballast plates on either side and then on top of that goes some work platforms which just drop into place. Next we start on one of the time consuming parts of any model crane and that's the reeving. So we'll reeve up the A-frame first and fold that forward. The winch drum for the A-frame is at the back and is a split drum and it uses a continuous piece of string going from one side of the drum up through all of the pulleys and then back onto the other side of the drum. And to do this the cranes etc rigging team spares no expense investing in a pencil and rubber bands. And the point of this is to get a free rolling spool of thread that can be used. The reason for this is that the free end of the thread doesn't get tied onto the drum at this point. Instead it's a matter of patience and you begin following the reeving diagram that's contained in the manual. As always the trick with reeving is to have some tension in the thread as you go. Here there's a paper clip used to keep the thread on the first of the pulleys. And a curved pin is being used to help get the thread round the pulleys. This isn't the most difficult reeving job but every now and then the thread will bounce off the pulleys and you just have to go back and carefully put it back on. Either that or it drives you to have a stiff drink. When all the reeving's done you can then take the free end down to the split drum and tie it on. It's nice then just to trim up the free end and then you can start winding some of the thread onto that drum just by gently winding it along and it pulls the thread from the spool. To make it easier metal keys are supplied to turn the drums and they push into holes in the side of the body and engage the drum and then you can use it to wind the drum. And you can also use an electric screwdriver to wind things on quicker. To finish off the A-frame we then disconnect all the high-tech temporary engineering. And then the free spool of thread can be taken down to the other side of the split drum. And when you've pulled out enough thread you can then tie it onto the drum. That creates one continuous length of thread tied onto winch number 4 and the A-frame's in business. The next thing to do is to wind a separate spool of thread onto each of winch drums 1 and 2. And if you're wondering what the paper's for, it's to protect the paintwork on the body from the winding key. For this initial assembly, we'll just configure a short, heavy main boom. It consists of the boom top with its lifting head, an intermediate boom section, and all these parts are die cast and they're very well made, very straight, and very strong. And the boom foot has got winch drums 5 and 6 on it, and I've already put the thread on those drums. The lift head is all a plastic part, the pulleys are plastic, but they roll very freely. It would have been nicer if the frame of the lifting head had been metal, but the colour match is very good. It pins into place with plastic pins and it all feels strong enough. Joining any of the lattice sections on the model is the same system that uses the plastic pins that Conrad liked to use. 
and they are tough enough and it's certainly quick and easy to join the boom sections like this and the connection once it's made is very strong. The next item to join up is the suspension bars and these are made of tough plastic and they just pin together in the same way. These bars are much better than the interlocking ones provided on the early versions of this model and once they're pinned up and under load they follow true straight lines. One end of the suspension bars fits at the boom head and that just pins into place with another plastic pin. Once that's completed the main boom is pre-assembled and we can move on to the weighty matter of adding some ballast. There are a couple of brackets which hang off the rear end so you have to be careful if ever you lift the model because the brackets will just lift easily off and you might not intend that. With the brackets on the ballast plates can be loaded and these are made of metal and they're heavy. In fact each one weighs 12.5 tonnes so you must be amazed at how I can lift these just with my fingers. The full configuration has nine on each side. Next we can enjoy inserting our boom. It's a simple enough matter, it just gets offered up into the connection point and then you've got some large bolts which just get pushed through. The good news is that because the parts are made very well they usually line up properly and the bolts can be pushed in by applying some pressure or maybe using a flat headed screwdriver. With the boom attached the final task is to hook up the suspension bars to the A-frame and that's just another pinning job. And then you can wind up the boom a little bit in order to start weaving the hook. Two hooks are supplied with the model, a 300 ton unit and a 600 ton unit. The 600 ton hook is a hefty piece of kit and it uses both winches 1 and 2 if it's rigged on the crane. It's also a modular hook so the weights on each end can be unclipped and you can remove the large plastic pins to make the hook break down into a smaller pieces so you can actually form two 300 ton hooks if you want. For this assembly of the crane we're going to fit the 300 ton hook onto the end of the main boom. The first part is easy which is just taking the thread over the main boom down to the hook. But the reeving is moderately painful and the way it's done here is to hang the hook off a couple of elastic bands. And once the thread is passed over a pulley it's held in place with a bit of plastic putty to stop the thread bouncing off. There's no easy way around this task, it can be frustrating so the best thing to do is to tell your family and friends to stay well clear while you're doing it. Once the reeving's done you have to tie off the thread but there's no particular tying off point so this has just been tied to the top of the boom. And then you very carefully remove the elastic bands that were holding the hook, still keeping the tension on the hook so that the threads are tight. And then you can tidy up the plastic putty by just peeling that off. And if you've been very careful you end up with the hook reeved and the thread sitting on all of the correct pulleys. The basic assembly is now nearly complete so you can wind up the main boom. But please don't use a high speed electric drill for this because the boom might shoot up and cut your head clean off. There are two more pieces of detail to add to display the model. One is this walkway which just clips into the holes neatly where the drums are driven. And there are some access steps which clip into the platform to allow the operators to get up to his cab. That completes the initial assembly and part one of this review. Part two looks at the details and features of the model and some of the other configurations that are possible.